Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Like this in my life. Yeah, it's been pretty remarkable. I mean, we'll get into a little bit of that discussion, I'm sure, a little bit later. What I'd like to start off with uh, talking today is about the fact that we knew what, what's happening right now in the stock markets was coming. Whether or not what, the, what started it, coronavirus or not, but we knew that this was coming. Um, tell us some of the similarities that you're seeing with this market versus 2008, or are there major differences? What, what do you feel you're, you're looking at right now? Oh, there are major differences. I've never seen anything like this. And, you know, I'm on record, the Wall Street Journal and others, I forecast the 1987 stock market crash, the dot-com bust, took out the domain name for the panic of 08, 2007, yeah, you know, so I've, I've been on this for a long time. I've never seen what's going on now that's ever gone on in my lifetime. And I'm, you know, 73 years old. And I've been trend forecasting for 40 years. It's not only the that Wall Street is going down. What makes this different than any other time? Main Street is going down. So the implications of this aren't just an overvalued stock market. Oh, you want to buy those airline stocks? Maybe the cruise ship stocks are for you. And how about those uh, people that put on those big concerts? Oh, I am the leader of your country, your city, your state. I say there can't be more than 150 people in one room. I'm a leader of another place. I say there only can be 250. Hey, I'm the governor of New York. I say 500. They're ruining, destroying the global economy like nothing we've ever seen before. This is much worse than any meltdown we've ever had in history. They've closed down business around the world. So not only are the equities going down because of their P-E ratios and overvalued and volatility index on and on, look what's going to happen to their earnings. So it's hitting Main Street and Wall Street at the same time. Because now you have all these people, oh yeah, I work in the, you know, I, I work in the entertainment business, but I can't entertain anybody. I'm in the restaurant business, but our restaurant's closed. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm in the airline business, but you know, I don't, I don't have it. Oh, I, I used to, it, with, ooh, whether it's Uber, whether it's, you name it, it's all God. This is, this is like nothing we've ever seen in our lifetimes. And so in terms of the trends that you forecast throughout the year, because things change and you have to, you have to come back to the trends and see how things are developing, developing. How do you see what we're seeing right now developing in some of your major trends for this year? If you can discuss that a little bit. Some of the major trends well, yeah, of, you've, you've been talking about, my, et cetera. Well, yeah, one of the major trends I've been talking about, you know, is the greatest depression. And I said it wouldn't happen until 2021. But I've always, again, in our magazine, The Trends Journal, I always make clear, you know, nobody's a futurist. You can't tell the future. There are too many wild cards, whether they're made by nature or man-made. And now we just saw a wild card thrown. So what is our trend forecast? Well, one of them was the New World Disorder. So anyway, the, the Great Depression has already started. That, that, that's, it's not starting next year. It's happening now. On, on, the, on the grander scheme, the governments have taken control of every country. I remember, remember those uh, people in Hong Kong that were protesting week after week, day after day? Don't hear about them anymore, do you? Hey, how about those yellow vests and all the other protests and strikes in France? 
Where? What? What were you talking about? Gone. Over. So the, the, the trends that we forecast for 2020 are going to accelerate in so many different levels. Because, yeah, they're not protesting anymore. But you think they're, they're what was the major issues in all these countries? The, world, the, the uh, new world disorder, as we called it. Oh, the income inequality. Can't have basic living standards. Tired of the top having everything and you having nothing. Oh, you think it was bad then? You haven't seen anything yet like it. So there's going to be a new world disorder. There's going to be the immigration problems that we see now. These are going to be nothing. Homeless problems, they're going to be all over the place. People are living, you look at the numbers. What do they say? That 70% uh, of Americans can't afford a $400 unexpected fee on something or, or expense? Is your car breaking down or whatever? And now they're out of work? Across the sectors, closing libraries, schools, you name it, Norway's closed down, you know, one country after another. It's a global economy. It, it, does, it does certainly feel like there's actually two, two tracks of fear in a way, right? You've got the fear of stocks coming down, which is being overshadowed by the the other fears um you know my my next question is sort of maybe something we can put as two which is you know just some discussion on the research your team's coming up with currently again we've got a, a fast developing story here and then as well as how you see this potentially playing out with the fears that are going on right now and in sort of what would you say to people who are just absolutely freaking out but I say to people who are absolutely freaking out, listen, I'm not really good at the numbers, but let's look at the numbers of the people that are dying or have died from coronavirus. So eh, according to the uh, this John Hopkins site that everybody's looking at, 5,088 people have died. 5,088 people have died. How many people are in the world? 7.7 .7 billion? Hey, how about that cholera and Ebola epidemic over there in a place called Yemen? Ah, who cares about Yemen? I don't care what 10 million people are starving and have these diseases. You know, over in Norway, I mentioned to you, you know, they, they closed down the place. Well, they closed um, down the entire country. You know how many people died? Try none. 750 ill. Out of how many million? And then who is this killing? It's killing elderly people that are chronically ill already. This, what's going on now, it's like when there, there's a hurricane coming, there's a hurricane coming, and all these little prostitutes get dressed up in their hurricane drag. And they're, they're watching the, the water coming over the boardwalk and the tree bending over. The branches falling down on the ground. You know, the, and the hurricane's 800 miles off the coast of Miami. But, you know, you better be prepared. <laughs> they're doing the same thing. This is a media hype. People were tuning out of the mainstream media. The numbers are there. People aren't reading newspapers. They're not turning on to the, the mainstream media. But boy, are they now. This is really great for business. And the politicians are taking advantage of it. And the people are buying it. Government imbeciles are destroying the global economy, and the people obey. As an Italian, I'm ashamed of closing down of all of Italy. And I started thinking to myself, how can they let this little guy Conti over there? Uh, never elected a prime minister appointed by the two stupid parties. Tell 60 million people what to do. 600 people died, again, or 650, again, elderly and ill. How could they let them tell them what to do? And I started thinking about it. They let Mussolini tell them what to do. The Germans let Hitler tell them what to do. And now every country's... All obeying what their leader gives them, 
and tells him to say, there's never been anything like this in my entire life. What's going on is they are creating a national war spirit in which we all march behind the government to fight, to fight, to fight. Nothing different. Every, every little thing. You know how many events I'm supposed to go to this, this past week? They're closing them this week and next week. Oh, well, none of them. None of them. None of them are going on. Everything canceled. Okay, let's take a brief pause for just a moment because there's lots more to get to. You are tuned into The Real Money Show with Guildhall Wealth Management. The number to call, one 878 silver or guildhallwealth.com. Don't touch that dial. There is way more to come with Gerald Salente in The Real Money Show. Okay, let's get back to the interview with Gerald Salente. But before we do, one eight seven seven eight silver or guildhallwealth.com. That's the number that you can use to get in touch with Guildhall Wealth Management to add physical gold and silver to your portfolio. Now, we've been talking with Gerald Salente. He's the editor of the Trends Journal. He's a lot to say, a very colorful person. I don't want to wait another moment. Back to you, Jeremy. So, Gerald, you're, you've mentioned many times in the past, actually, that when all else fails, they'll take you to war. Are you, are you, you saying that it. this could potentially be the war that they're looking to fight? Well, is, is, is it going to? Look what's going on with the United States in, the, in, in Iraq again. Well, they killed two American soldiers in Iraq the other day. And when, when the Americans, they, now they, they're saying they bombed Syria and more of Iraq. And it's them Iranians. We've got to get them Iranians. Hey, watch those Venezuelans. It's not only America. It's all over the world. Look, look, look at oil prices. You're looking at Brent crude. You know, what, you know what, what, what's it at? It's around 30, uh, $33 a barrel. $33 a barrel. Do you know what Russia needs it at $42 a barrel to break even? Saudi Arabia needs it at around anywhere between eighty-four to to a hundred dollars a barrel, depending on whose numbers you look at. Do you realize the riots, the internal riots that are going to go on in countries around the world? When all else fails, they'll take us to war. This is a replay. What we're seeing now is the nineteen thirties all over again, but this time it's much worse. Oh, oh. Breaking news, breaking news, they, they have a coronavirus case in Turkey. In Turkey? Oh, wow. That's Turkey. Oh, 80 million people. Hey, what about that? They have those 500,000 dead Syrians over there and all the ones that are trying to leave now as this war keeps going? Ah, they don't count. We got a case of coronavirus here in Turkey. We're going we're gonna to invade and occupy as much of Syria as we can. That won't be in the news. The Greeks don't want them coming over there. They're chasing them out. The whole place is but We're going to talk about, we have a case of coronavirus, and now I'm closing down this, and I'm closing down that. Yes, they're going to take us to war. And the people will obey. Look how they're obeying their, their imbecile governments. Oh, now you're up in Canada. You, you don't need high oil prices up there. Everything will be fine. Oh, and get ready for the big real estate crash. Because particularly Toronto, all the areas up in Canada, Vancouver, so many places, and, and around the world where the prices skyrocketed since 2008. And now you have all these people out of work, no jobs, lost all this income, businesses. Businesses can't afford to lose two months' worth of, of, of income. Are they going to be buying houses? No, they're not going to be buying houses. That's for sure. And you know what? It it does feel. Look, we're we're in the precious metals business here, and and we've been just crazy busy this week. And you know, people making the decision to protect their wealth. And I know this is a market that you've certainly discussed in the past, called the market in the past. Um, and again, fast developing story, but when you're looking for value out there, where do you see yourself protecting protecting your own wealth going forward? I mean, it's it's one thing to protect your family, let's say, or another thing to just be able to get through to 
you know, when stores might back open up again. But what about protecting wealth? Again, I, you know, I don't give financial advice. Our trend, uh, trend alert, June 6, 2019, the gold bull won. And again, the global economy was collapsing before this all happened. Go back to uh, the last quarter of 2019. What was the uh, GDP of Europe? 0.1%. So yeah, gold, guns, and a getaway plan, as I say, see it. And there's going to be a lot of violence, by the way. As I say, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. So gold and gold prices are going down now. And again, you go back to 2007, 2008, gold wasn't spiking. It didn't really start spiking until 2009. They're shedding all, all, all the, all the orders. They, they, they're, buying, they're selling out of gold to, to shore up their uh, cash reserves to meet margin calls. I mean, that's what's going on. It's not that they're selling gold because, you know, bringing down the price because they think gold prices are going down. They're in trouble. They're selling everything they can to cover everything that they're losing. And I don't see silver following gold this time uh, as, uh, as it did the last time. It's going to be a much slower uh, increase, I believe, in silver because you know, silver is used in manufacturing. It's used in a lot of different areas. And as the global Great Depression hits, I, I don't see silver rising like gold. But when gold goes, gold should now be well over $2,000 an ounce. And and when it once it breaks that two thousand, it's it's going to skyrocket, and they're going to do everything they can to stop this. So let's get this straight. You just saw the Federal Reserve dump in what one point five trillion dollars into the equity markets this week. Oh yeah, we got to save the equity markets. They're 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 better than you, the gamblers in the equity markets, the hedge funds, and everybody else. You are a piece of crap, you everyday people. We got to give the money to the gamblers so they don't have to lose a lot of money. So what I'm saying to you is that they're going to do everything they can to keep gold prices down. And once they skyrocket, they're going to do everything they can to get your gold. It's going to be the 1930s all over again. And every one of these governments are now declaring emergency powers. And an emergency powers, the fascists, the dictators... The corporatists that are running the world could do anything that they want. They'll take everything that they want. So you better, when I say guns, gold, and a getaway plan, you know, if you want to keep your gold in a safety deposit box, knock yourself out. The motto of the Trends Journal is think for yourself.